Hi everyone. Uh, today you're joining us here in Taipei, Taiwan. We are at the Gigabyte headquarters, and I thought that we basically get a couple of, of my overclocking friends here and um, talk to you about overclocking, debunker some of those mysteries and myths, and and also misunderstandings. So with me. Hi everyone. I'm Hai Kuki. I come from Taiwan. And. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Song Kwan and come from the Thailand. So, as I said, we're here to take away en any myths and, and, and show you why it's important to overclock, get that little bit more performance and also efficiency. All right, so very core component of uh, overclocking in a general sense is the hardware. And so we need to go through what hardware we have here today. One of the core components of an overclocked computer is the motherboard. Without a good motherboard, you're not getting anywhere. So with us today, we have a Gigabyte motherboard. And to explain, it's high cookie. Uh, so we prepared the Gigabyte EB45 DSGR for testing. And uh, the Gigabyte product is very reliable for overclocker. Thank you. And to go with that, we have a good processor. Zolcon. For the processor, uh, today we will work with the quad core CPU from Intel. And to go with these two, we also need other pieces of hardware. So we have Corsair memory, Gigabyte graphics card, Western Digital hard drive, Silverstone power supply. And to go with those, we need the cooling equipment. So we have a large copper container for sub-zero coolant and temperature probe. So many people ask us, why do sub-zero cooling? Why go that far? Why go to the extremes? Well, it's simple. When you're at the extreme, you're able to see what modern day computing will actually be like in the future. We're currently playing with hardware, which is seen as the top dog hardware, but we can see what it, the top dog in two years time, three years time, will actually be similar to, and that's exciting. So that's why we do it. When you do go to the extremes, there can be some issues. There's no denying that. And there's a whole load of them. And so to find out about one of them, I'm going to ask Hi Cookie. Hi Cookie, what's one problem that we can come across? Uh, normally it would happen to the cold bug. The cold bug, can you tell us about that? Yeah, cold bug, uh, uh, as we know, the every, every IC hardware a chip that has the limit and the nut. And so it's including the in Intel process they have the limit around the temperature limit. So the temperature if too low they will cause the the CPU won't boot and the not working. It's a that situation is called cold bug. Okay. So how do you come back from a cold bug? Oh uh, usually we use the heat fan mm -hmm. to uh, to recover the cold bug. So you heat it back up and yeah. thaw it out and it works again. Yeah. Fantastic. During sub-zero cooling, there are some precautions that you need to take because the things that we use for cooling, such as liquid nitrogen and dry ice, are chemicals. And therefore, we need precaution. Liquid nitrogen, that is, as the name states, liquid nitrogen. Nitrogen is flammable. Therefore, keep any naked flames away from it and well, if you don't, you might go boom, or a bit of flame, or something. We don't want that. Then there's dry ice. Dry ice is compressed carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide, as many of you know, is poisonous to humans. Therefore, make sure that you keep a nice ventilated room while using carbon dioxide. Well, dry ice, that's what it is. And if you don't, you'll have a buildup within the small atmosphere around where you're benching. Therefore, more carbon dioxide, less oxygen. From that, you can get, get a headache, and that headache can lead to dizziness, and from dizziness, you can faint. If you faint in such an atmosphere, it's quite possible that if there's no one else around, well, you could suffocate. We don't want that. How do you know when, when you're sub-zero? Well, you need a temp probe. A temp probe will tell you what temperatures are and how, how they fluctuate. So when it comes to things like cold bug, you can avoid hitting that cold bug. 
or when you know that there's a hard test that's coming up, for example, the, the CPU test within 3 Mark 6 that's when you know that you need to get those temperatures down, often by an extra 5, 10 degrees, but that small amount can be enough to pull you through. So a temp probe is vital. We spoke about chemical precautions. They aren't the only precautions. Other precautions include the need to insulate. Now one such form is foam, closed cell foam, open cell foam. Two types of foam needed for insulation. What we also use is Vaseline and also blue tack. What the aim of this is, is to make an airtight seal between the CPU and the bottom of the container that we're using to hold the sub-zero coolant. What we get from that basically is an area where we cannot get condensation. With condensation, well, it means water. Water and electronics, as many of you know, does not go. So keep it dry and you'll have a good bench session. Get it wet, you're going to get all kinds of trouble.